Welcome to this video series on algorithms and algorithm analysis. In this first part, we give some motivation for why and how we study algorithms, and why we want to analyze them rigorously. To motivate this topic, let's consider how the two list implementations we've developed perform. Throughout this discussion, we'll use the variable n to denote the size of the list. Recall that one of the fundamental operations on our list was an index-based retrieval method. This operation may be efficient or inefficient depending on the list implementation. However, how do we quantify this? How efficient is it? How inefficient is it? Should we approach this question from a theoretical point of view or from a practical one? With an array-based list implementation, to get the ith element, we only had to compute a memory offset and then jump to that element. This was possible because using an array, we could exploit the random access to efficiently retrieve the element. There's only a bit of arithmetic and a memory load, an access operation to do this. The associated cost is the same regardless of the index variable i, and it's also independent of the size of the list, n. In contrast, with a linked list, an index-based retrieval method is not as simple. To get the ith element, we have to traverse i nodes. As a consequence, the number of operations and thus the total performance can vary depending on which element we want to retrieve. There's a big difference between getting the element at the index 10 and getting an element at index 1 million, for example. In general, the worst case is when we wish to get the last element at index n. The cost is not constant for this operation, but varies linearly with respect to the index i or more generally with the size of the list n. To see this in practice, consider the following experiment. I've written some very simple Java code that takes a list of integers and sums them up. As you can observe on line 5, I'm using the .get method. What will the performance of this code be like if we pass it an array list? How would it perform if we passed it a linked list? And how would they ultimately compare? Before testing it from a practical perspective, let's analyze this code from a theoretical perspective. If we pass in an array list, we can reasonably expect that each get method call takes a constant amount of time or resources. The for loop executes n times, the size of the list. Thus, the total time that this method takes to execute is going to be proportional to n. We can characterize this behavior by modeling it with a linear function. In this function, the coefficients a and b serve as constants that characterize the amount of time the actual operations take in some computer. These constants can vary greatly depending on many factors, primarily how fast the computer is. We could upgrade our computer, making these operations twice as fast, and thus the coefficients would become half as big. However, the overall function would not change. It would still remain linear. If we were to execute this method with a linked list, the behavior would be significantly different. Each get method would require i operations. The for loop still executes n times. However, each iteration of the for loop is not constant, but requires a variable number of operations. We can sum these operations up as follows. The first iteration requires one node traversal. The second requires two, the third requires three, etc. Using Gauss's well-known formula gives us a closed form for the summation. The performance for a linked list can be characterized thus with a quadratic equation. Again, the coefficients here will be system dependent and may vary. To recap, we have a linear function that characterizes the array-based list and a quadratic function that characterizes a linked list. I've named the function t sub n since it represents a computing resource, in this case, computation time. Intuitively, the linear solution is better because linear functions are smaller or more accurately have a slower rate of growth than quadratics. In fact, this is the most important thing when analyzing algorithms. How do algorithms perform as we increase the input sizes? In this case, how does each one of these data structures perform as we say, double the size of our list? Suppose that it takes a certain number of seconds to compute a sum on an input size of n. How long can we theoretically expect the code to take on an input size of 2n? For a linear function, it would be a 2n or double the amount of time. Here I'm ignoring the constants in the lower order terms just to simplify the analysis. For the quadratic function, doubling the input size actually quadruples the running time because of the square factor. This means that code that performs linearly requires twice as many resources when you double the input size. And quadratic code requires four times as many. I've set up an experiment in Java. We'll run the code for various input sizes and sample the runtimes for each. 
In practice, you would need to run this experiment many times and take an average to diminish the influence of other factors. I've set up the demonstration here. Each test randomly generates a list of a certain size. It then samples the system running time to sum them all up. The actual experiment runs this several times, testing for lists of size 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, etc., up to a million. Let's go ahead and run it. As you can see, there's already a noticeable discrepancy. I've already run the full experiment, and here are the results. I ran both algorithms for list sizes of up to a million in increments of 50,000, represented here on the x-axis. The time in seconds is reported on the y-axis. The blue jagged line represents the actual sample run times for a linked list implementation. The largest list of 1 million elements took about 8 minutes to execute. I originally graphed the performance of the array-based list as well, but the graph line was essentially flat and would not show up graphically anyway. The red line is a quadratic regression of our experimental data. Not only does the regression look very close to our samples, it actually is. The regression correlation coefficient for this line was greater than 0.99, meaning that the two graphs are statistically extremely close. This demonstrates that our theoretical analysis closely matched the empirical performance. The behavior of a linked list is clearly quadratic. Though we ran the experiment for only up to 1 million elements, the theoretical analysis as well as the quadratic regression line allow us to predict and project what the performance might be like if we increased our list size further. For example, if we increased our list size up to 10 million, a tenfold increase, we would expect the linear algorithm to be 10 times slower and for the quadratic to be 100 times slower, giving us even starker contrasts. Now we're comparing seconds to hours in performance. If we increase the size tenfold again, the difference becomes ever more dramatic. Still seconds now compared to months. Still further, we're comparing minutes to years and minutes to centuries for lists consisting of tens of billions of elements. By no means are these list sizes unreasonable. In today's world of big data, they should be considered normal, if not small, in fact. However, the performance is clearly not even comparable. Computation on the order of eight minutes is slow, but reasonable. There's no scenario in which centuries of computation time is reasonable or acceptable. In case you're wondering what the proper Java code should look like, I've fixed our method from before. Instead of using the .get method, which can be inefficient depending on the list implementation, I'm using an enhanced for loop using the lists iterator. This code will now be performant regardless of the lists underlying implementation. In case you think that this is a contrived example, it's actual code that I've seen in multiple real-world projects. I like using this example because it's very simple and many developers from novices to even experts may not recognize the subtle issues involved here. Thus, it illustrates the importance of having a fundamental understanding of algorithms and algorithm analysis. Computational processes have real expense and require real resources to execute. This motivating example has proven that it is important to understand both the theoretical and practical implications of various algorithms and data structures. Empirical experiments are useful, but we also need a more formal, rigorous, generalized framework from which we can analyze algorithms in an abstract way. In subsequent parts, we will develop these ideas further.